Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lucor Automotive. Today, clearly, we are not at Lucor Automotive. I am sharing some cool neighbors we have. This is Fields Auto Works down here, uh, and this is a Ferrari. Well, it's the beating heart of a Ferrari. And this is a Lamborghini. This is, well, the beating heart of a Lamborghini. Um, both of which will go in that crazy thing. This is a Fields Auto Works Scioto. Scioto? Scioto? Scioto. Scioto, as we call it here. Um, this is their crazy creation that they build just down the street from us here at Lucor Automotive. Uh, and it has finished its trip around the country, um, being shown off at various places. And it is back in their shop. As soon as it came back, I wanted to come down here and take a look at this and share this with you guys. This is a really, really cool machine you guys are going to love to see. It's awesome. Stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about. So this is Rob, Mr. Fields of Fields Auto Works. How are you doing, sir? Good. We last talked uh, a couple of weeks ago about the state of racing. Yeah. Uh, and this is your version of the state of racing, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is the next generation of, is this like gentleman racing kind of stuff? Kind of. It's, um, it's, we're really at the, the intersection of club racing, um, you know, hobbyists, track days, enthusiasts yeah. like that. Um, and then um, at the extreme outer edges of streetcar performance. Okay. So we've been down here a number of times before, and if you're familiar with the channel for a while, we did a, where were we at, Barber? Yeah. Barber Motorsports Park. Uh, we took their Fields Auto Works Cardinal, which is one of these things. Um, these are custom built chassis that are powered by Ford 23, like a Mustang, yep. essentially. Um, and the neat thing is they also use a lot of Mustang components. They're all essentially off the shelf replaceable bits, but they're in a custom chassis. So you have a incredibly capable chassis. Uh, obviously the body is missing of this one, but um, you have an incredibly capable chassis that's custom built for truly what you want to do, go race car stuff, but you can buy bits and pieces. Right. They're not calling you for, oops, I broke a thing. Exactly. You can get bits and pieces easily and you're really creating, moving this idea over into a way larger world in that side of things. Right, it's, it's kind of the, the natural next progression of, of the, the same concept, which, you know, is take the very approachable, very lightweight, very serviceable uh, chassis package of the Cardinal, um, but reimagined not as a um, kind of old school GT coupe, but rather yep. as a conventional sports racer. So very much inspired by the iconic endurance legends from Porsche, from Lola, from sure. Ferrari, from groups like that. But um, lots of modern technology incorporated, lots of modern downforce and safety techniques incorporated, um, while still paying tribute to that iconic shape. And keeping it serviceable Service, without a race team. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've, we've been the people who, um, you know, you blow up a gearbox and you wait six months for a replacement or you, right. um, you know, you get the unobtainium shocks and once you have to service them, they're never the same. And yeah. it, the, the whole point of what we do is um, to take some of that top tier performance and make a part of that accessible to our, our club and enthusiast level uh, customers. Gotcha. So, um, very much still the, the focus on reliability, serviceability, accessibility, um, all in this very lightweight and approachable package. Um, we did make a number of jumps that make it, you know, the, the cost and um, some of the um, compatibility does, does go up with, uh, with this platform, so going to things like carbon fiber bodywork or um, a true transaxle, things like that. Um, they take us a little bit out of the realm of um, the traditional uh, DE or club racer, but um, we keep the costs low enough that anybody who's seriously considering new Corvettes, new Porsches, new sure. Ferraris, um, this is you know easily within the range that they're already looking at, but they can make it exactly what they want. It's it's a premium customer package. This is not a. I'm buying a base model Mustang kind of thing. But. Absolutely true, but at the same time, to, to take a base model Mustang and cage it, put the right brakes, the right shocks, the right, you know, by the time you incorporated everything 
that would go into this, you're going to end up spending similar money to do it professionally. You know, if you if you aren't doing all of it on your own, if you're paying somebody sure. for those hours, you're going to quickly total up to what we would have into one of these in order to get yourself to that same point in what at the end of the day would still be a base model Mustang and perform like a base model Mustang. Right, and way less capable. Right. So we talked a lot off camera. Um, this thing is, is I, I, I don't know if this will really translate as well on camera as it should, but this thing is four inches lower now with nothing under it. Right, yeah, at the, at the moment we're sitting body on the ground, um, rope, Traditional clearance would be four inches of ground clearance. That takes us to our roof light height total of 42 inches. I'm kind of short, I'm five foot seven. This thing is at basically my waist. So that roof line will be here. And we'll get a look at the chassis here in just a minute where a lot of that really comes into play. But the other really cool thing is because they've designed this car to be essentially almost modular and they've done all of the drafting work, all the design work, all the engineering work over in this little room over here that I'm not allowed to show you. <laughs> that screen right there, they've done all their own engineering, all their own drafting. They've designed this thing nose to tail, top to bottom, purpose built, but it can have whatever drivetrain you want to have in it. Yeah, essentially. Uh, yeah, as, as long as it physically fits within the constraints of the chassis and we can get the axle lines where we need to, the exhaust headers where we need to, um, you know, we've uh, actually taken orders for cars with everything from LS motors to Lamborghini V12s to other Italian engines, um, you know, even some German, you know, V10s, things like that. Um, you know, the, the real kind of base performance figures of the car, the weight, the, the things that we quote as the, the specs of the car are based around the Crate LS package, but really if it physically fits, um, you know, obviously some custom engineering and, and some custom fabrication, that sure. all gets passed through to the, the, the customer on the project, but um, we have the, because our, our entry cost on the project is so much lower than a conventional supercar, there's headroom to do that kind of custom engineering sure. and, and give the customer exactly what it is that they want out of the car. And you have a custom built for you supercar versus you bought a Lamborghini Huracan that you may take to the track. Right. It doesn't absolutely. necessarily fit you or do anything great. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now this is, I mean, you know, the, the easy comparison is the difference between a made-to-measure suit and something off the rack, right? Sure, absolutely. Um, and, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, the real focus is uh, making sure that the customer takes home something that is um, exactly what they wanted. It's in the budget and the, the specs and everything that they set out from the beginning. Um, sometimes we have to guide people, you know, we get, we get requests for quotes on things. Uh, Sometimes, well, it's just, you know, that we really can't make that one work, sure. but what about this, right? Um, so we, we do try to accommodate any reasonable request, you know, and certainly the, the, the physical limitations of the chassis are really the only limits on what we can put together for someone. I want one. So you can put that Lamborghini V12 in it. Correct. You put that Ferrari V10 in it. Yeah. With no problem. It's just the V8, yes. V8, yes. okay, excuse me. So we're gonna go take a quick little peek about what they put underneath this car. I wanna show you one more time. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. So the whole body is carbon fiber. Correct. Lexan windows, carbon fiber body. Chassis is all custom built by them. Oh God, look at that thing. It's so good. Now we were talking off camera, these NACA ducts you were saying are your people cooling, your ventilation right. for inside. Exactly, that's cabin air. Okay, so that's your version of cabin air and then you've got this gigantic which would be a Lexan windshield. Correct. So visibility has got to be incredible out of this thing. Front, front and side visibility is awesome, rear visibility, uh, we got to help you along a little bit with the rear view that, camera. That comes through a camera. And this is also really cool too because your design as far as this goes, these, the doors come straight up obviously, they hinge up here and your seat comes out to here. So this all swings up, 
you stand in the seat and then sit down in the car. And then this will all clamshell this way and come up to be serviceable where your engine and transmission are going to be all back here, which we'll show you here in just a second. Okay, so we can have anything we want to in this thing. Number one option, let's put an LS in it, right? Sure. So this is chassis number one? Correct. First creation of this Scioto? Scioto. <laughs> Scioto. Uh, it's going to have an LS in it. Of course it's going to have an LS in it. There's your LS in it. So again, all, all of this is custom-y bits that we're not going to show that. That's all top secret stuff. But that's just a crate motor LS, right? Yeah, so this one's a, an LS7. Um, Got a whole bunch of go fast stuff bolted to it, but um, fundamentally from a packaging perspective, um, stock LS7. Um, now, you know, it's got nice heads. It's got, um, you know, we're going to be putting a daily dry sump on it, things like that. But, okay. Um, from a performance standpoint, in a 2,000 pound, you know, chat or a 2,000 pound car, um, we're not really shooting at ultimate horsepower numbers. Sure. We're really more focused on reliability, drivability. Um, you know, none of that power does any good if, if your driver can't manage it, if you can't put it down. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, um, the real jewelry, though, is um, starting at the, the bell housing and back. Um, so this particular one um, the, uh, includes this Albans ST6M uh, sequential transaxle. Um, it's a version of the transmission that um, was seen in things like the Aussie V8 supercars and certain LMP prototypes, um, other mid-engine sports cars or sports racers. Um, really high torque capacity and at the same time it's um, true sequential. Uh, it's arranged in such a way that lets you get the motor very low in the chassis um, and uh, really, the whole thing can be serviced. You can rebuild the, the whole transmission through the back and sides in the car uh, if you needed to. Wow. Um, so, supremely serviceable, extremely reliable. Um, we are using um, Geartronics and Motec for um, our management and our shifting. Um, so, it will be a three-pedal car, but you'll uh, be basically two-pedal operation once you leave, uh, leave the pits, once the car's rolling. Sure. Um, steering wheel paddle shift, um, although Geartronics obviously offers any any number of different shifting strategies um, from, you know, sequential, uh, you know, conventional stick to uh, paddles and all of it to some extent is programmable. Sure. Um, again, you know, our focus here is on life, reliability, uh, and so we aren't going after the utmost last hundredth of a second in shift times, but sure. rather... Um, focused on a quick and efficient shift, um, but uh, you know, more important that it be serviceable and have a long life. And this, again, I, it's all most of mostly it's all serviceable serviceable pieces that are not custom one-off bits. Right. So if you have this, you purchase your chassis, you take it to the racetrack, and you need to do some servicing to it for whatever reason. You can do that without having a professional race team there to support you. If you happen to have one, good for you. <laughs> right. But it's it's an LS. If you've worked on an LS, you can work on this. Um, you know, the the gearbox is certainly going to be a bit more of on the on the tricky side of things because it's a more of a specialty unit. But for the most part, and I, I like the fact that you brought up the fact that you're not you're not shooting for the moon. Like obviously, you can make a thousand horsepower LS if you really wanted to, but that's going to make this car almost. Almost tough, drivable. tough to drive at least below 100 miles an hour. Yeah, um, it's a it's about making it a, a lightweight, capable chassis that's reliable and will go out and turn lap after lap after exactly. lap after lap. Exactly. Not about a, being a dyno queen or anything along those right. lines. Right. Not that you can't do that with it. You certainly could. But, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's core competency is around you know reliability, safety, and and performance on track. And so, why would you buy? Why would you buy this versus going out and buying a C8R or a C8Z06? Sure. So the the basics of it are we're starting from um, a design um, that is really intended for um, the track. It's really, performance, safety, and reliability are, are primary, and they come before 
uh, considerations like uh, road comfort or NGH sure. or things like that. Um, so one of my favorite things to point out, I'll jump up here, you know, and, um, this is, you know, about four inches lower than it will be with actual ride height. You can see where the entire drivetrain is relative to myself, where the center of gravity is going to be. Yeah. Um, and so... Like um, your knees right, is where all the weight is. Exactly. So that's the level of, of designed performance, um, that really is a differentiator. You know, this is more aptly compared to something like a prototype or a, um, you know, a, a purpose-built IMSA car. It's really not comparable with a converted streetcar. So, I mean, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense because you're you're putting the weight as low as you possibly can. You're balancing the car nicely. You're making it reliable. You're making it serviceable. These are also not really jewelry pieces. These are cars that are being built not to go stand in a parking lot with a bunch of other you know, toys or get rubbed on with a diaper. You're building these cars to have the hell of a value. Absolutely. Like that's the purpose built of this thing. This is not a, ma a bragging piece. This is a, this is a person that has the means and wants to be able to buy and run a true actual race. Oh, absolutely. And you know, in that world of, um, you know, there, there's certainly people who enjoy the show aspect, or sure. the prestige, or the right. Most of our customers are the guys that are they're buying the prestige car because it comes with the extra horsepower and the go fast bits, and they're ripping the hand stitch leather interior out of it, right? Um, so, you know, it's not that these cars can't be prestige items or collector items or any of this stuff, but ultimately, our view on this is. You know, we want to make the best sporting goods equipment that we can for the people who are in this sport. Sure. Right? Um, and sometimes that includes, you know, a little bit more dress up or a little bit less weight or a, whatever it is that that customer really wants. But uh, ultimately, our focus is on the customer, the owner experience and, and their intended use for it. Um, you know, we're certainly not going to going to cry many tears if, if a bunch of them end up in collection. But <laughs> sure. at the same time, um, you know, the intent, the purpose of the car is something that goes out, gets driven, gets hammered on, and um, you know, performs lap after lap. And you know, we really want to see them out in the world and passing people and people going, "What the hell was that?" Sure, sure. What a cool machine. So, you know, this is a re this is a this is the high end of of privateer racing, of like individual, not factory supported racing. Out, outside of the pro world, yes. Yeah. Yep. But it's also a great option for somebody who has the means and is looking for something that they can go out and just have a great time with and not have to end up with massive, massive complicated repair bills or maintenance schedules where you have to tear the motor down every thousand hours. Right. You know. No, and, and you know... You know, we're we're talking when we say means. When we say you know, we're talking, you know, brand new C eight Z six money or right. used Porsche GT three money. We're um, not talking. Yeah, it's two million not, dollar exa race exactly. Um, and so you know, there are comparable comparable machines out there from Radical or KTM or people, but you know, our our customers they don't want the forty hour rebuild cycle. They right. don't want the and and this is much more. You know, this is much more car than some of those um, are, but it's definitely much less luxury machine than something like a C8 or a Ferrari would be. Sure. And they're custom done one-offs. Exa yeah, exactly. I Whatever mean, it is you want, Mr. Customer, if it's within engineering parameters and we can make it work, we'll make it work. Exactly. Versus which box would you like to check, which color would your Corvette like to be. Right. So. And you're not going to get passed by another one. Right. Well... I mean, maybe. You sell a <laughs> lot of them. Maybe. For a little while, you won't get passed by another one. Yeah. So there you go, guys. I wanted to swing down here. They literally just got this thing back, I think, like yesterday, the day before. Yes. I saw it, that it, it had shown back up. It's been Pebble Beach. and Yeah, we did Monterey Car Week and then spot, uh, hit a bunch of stuff on the way back. And um, So, yeah, the car, car has seen a whole bunch um, and uh, as a, as a mock-up for people to see what the carbon body and everything will look like. And, yeah. Uh, now it's time to make it make some noise. Yeah. Very cool. We will see this thing again, especially because this thing is real close to body on chassis and getting to the point where wiring and firing up happens. So we'll definitely swing back down here and uh, talk to Rob and the guys again. Uh, again, this is Field Auto Works. This is what they do. This is called the... Sciota Coupe. Sciota Coupe. 
There you go, guys. Thanks for being here. Share this to everybody so I can buy myself one of these things because I would look great in one of these. And it's built for somebody my size. Actually, you're 6'3". You said you fit in this thing perfectly fine, too. Yeah, lots of helmet clearance, all the stuff. So there you go. Even better. So you can fit big guys, short guys, small guys, fat guys. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for being here. Take care. Bye-bye.